Bob Issue. This is your TV6 Early News. Good evening, everyone. I'm Steve Asplin. The bidding process for renewal fuel in Sawyer and what's happened to the employee the story tonight. College Prep, a new program in Delta County, looking to increase the number of residents with college degrees. Right to Die, your Facebook story, and should you have a choice, and the issue of assisted suicide. The answer's tonight. Your TV6 Medical Minute tonight, Dr. Michael Grossman on diabetes, the causes and treatment, and how to control it. Check up anyone, NMU nursing students offering healthy advice at a health fair today in Marquette. From Weather Center 6, I'm Carl Bonak. High pressure builds in as a front drifts away. Your forecast into the weekend ahead. I'm Mike Ludlam in sports. NMU hockey team gets ready to face another highly ranked opponent and will have the winner of the play of the week. And the Dickinson County business is singled out as a best recycler of the year. It's all next on your news on TV6. For Upper Michigan, Steve Aspen, Carl Bonac Weather, and Mike Ludlam Sports. This is your TV6 Early News. The first round in selling the renewal fuel plant in K.I. Sawyer is coming to a close and the employees are gone. Cliffs Natural Resources says they've received significant buyer interest in the facility. They've received several non-binding bids and will begin narrowing down those bids next week. Operations have been suspended at the biofuel plant since September. Friday was the final day of work for 25 of the plant's employees. They've been given severance packages, but at this point, none have been relocated to employment at Cliff's other Michigan operations. Cliff's was unable to disclose the number or nature of the bids and are unable to say if the facility may continue to produce biofuel. The process is viable, um, but it's just not something that, that, that we're comfortable in doing right now. And hopefully, uh, maybe a successful bidder would be someone who has some experience in the biofuel area. Cliffs Natural Resources hopes to complete the sale late this year or in early 2012. Delta County Schools, businesses and organizations are partnering to launch a program to boost college participation and completion in the county. It's a community initiative called the Delta County College Access Network. The aim is to help 5th, 8th and 10th graders become more college ready. Bay College President Dr. Laura Coleman said only 17.1% of Delta County residents 25 years or older have bachelor's degrees. The plan is to increase that number to 62% by 2025. There's really a lot of ramifications from this and we as a community need to really go after this and really hard. It also makes a difference than when businesses look at our community and they want to come here. Do you have an educated workforce? And we need to be able to say yes we do. Officials are working on a startup of $50,000 grant. Now they're hoping to launch the initiative early next year. The votes are in and today our Facebook viewers wanted to know about your right to die. Should it be your choice What's considered a suicide? TV6's Nikki Davidson joins us with today's Facebook story of the day. Nikki? Steve, assisted suicide is a controversial topic. Three states have laws making assisted suicide legal, but a couple dozen have laws that criminalize it. Here in Michigan, we don't have a state assisted suicide law at all, but attorneys say you could technically be charged with a felony. Are you is that correct? That's true. Known as Dr. Death, Dr. Jack Vorkian was a Michigan physician who assisted in the suicide of 130 patients. He served eight years in prison for his actions, but was just as served in his case. Our Facebook viewers disagree. Vicki Snyder writes, if someone's condition is terminal and they are suffering with no chance of getting any better, then they should have that option. We shoot horses and put down our pets when they are suffering. Tammy Leslie Westman writes, assisted suicide is homicide. It's immoral and against a doctor. Oath. It's too easy for impatient and non caring family members. But there are some decisions the law does allow you to make regarding a potential end of life, such as advanced directives or a living will. Most medical power of attorney documents, it will specifically say that the decision to let somebody tell your doctors to give you treatment that could or take away treatment that could possibly end your life is not assisted suicide. That may be a request not to administer life support or a do not resuscitate order or more personalized and specific requests. The next time I have a heart attack or a stroke, if I am without vital signs, I don't want to go through this again, I don't want to be resuscitated, then that person would want to have a do not resuscitate order. Michigan operates on a patient advocate system, which means you can select someone else to communicate your wish 
wishes if you are unable to. And Weidman says it's important to remember when setting up these kinds of directives that the law does change from state to state. If you're going to be traveling or moving, it's important to check and make sure the directives you set up will apply in that location. Steve? Thanks a lot, Nikki. Here are your Facebook story options for tomorrow. First, a hunter's checklist. What should you take care of before hunting season starts? And what are some easily forgotten preparations? Second, foreign exchange students. How do you get involved with hosting a student and what are the benefits to you and the foreign exchange student? And third, are you ready for marriage? How do you know if your relationship is the point of getting hitched and what are the signs of rushing to the altar too fast? Go to the TV6 Facebook page and vote for your favorite story. Well, it's been almost six months since Jed Gagner was sworn in as the youngest member of the Escanaba School Board. 18-year-old Jed Gagner was elected in April as when was sworn in in July. He says while his time on the board has been difficult, it's also been very rewarding. As soon as he was sworn in, he faced the district's budget, which he says he received comments on from students. He says the best part of his job so far, bringing his fellow high school students' opinions to the board. There were lots of strong opinions right when I got on because I was in the middle of the privatizing discussion, but now it's kind of leveled out and people aren't, they're just watching to make sure that they know what's going on so they can get the full facts. Jed says he looks forward to the rest of his term and hopes his service is an example to his fellow students to take action in local politics. Nagani police want to talk to anyone that has some information regarding a hit and run accident. It happened at the corner of County Road and Beta Knox Street. Authorities say the accident occurred late Monday night or early Tuesday morning. They say a green vehicle left at the roadway at the intersection hitting a utility pole before leaving the scene. Now the suspect vehicle is believed to be a Ford and should have noticeable damage to the front end. If you have any information regarding this incident, please contact the Nagani City Police Department at 475 41 Five, four. A robbery suspect is being looked for in Marquette after a woman's purse was stolen last month. According to the Marquette City Police, the purse was taken on October 17th. The victim was transporting laundry from her car and had left the purse inside the vehicle. She found it and had been stolen when she went to retrieve it. Now, police say the woman's credit card was used at a local store. The man who allegedly used it was caught on camera. He is a white male, 20 to 30 years old. Anyone who may have some information about this suspect is asked to contact the Marquette City Police Department at 228-0400. Today, Congressman Dan Beneshek expressed his support for the Veterans Compensation Cost of Living Adjustment Act of 2011. The legislation would give a 3.6% increase in veteran disability compensation, clothing allowance, and dependency compensation for surviving spouses and children. Congressman Beneshek, who worked at the Oscar Johnson VA Medical Center in Iron Mountain, says the cost of living boost will start December 1st. This will be the first cost of living adjustment for veterans since 2009. Time for your first check on weather, and it's been a gloomy day, but changes are on the way, and they're already seeing it out west, Carl. There are some uh, breaks, or at least let's say a thinning of the overcast in the far west, but in the uh, southeastern and eastern UP, there's actually some light rain. Check out radar and you can see how everything's moving up from southwest to northeast and slowly clearing from west to east. There is a little rain at uh, Manistique and also at Newberry, and there's been 15 hundredths of an inch from our weather watcher at Van Meer just to the east of Munising, and it's about to end there. At Mersey Oats and Marquette, 44, a north North wind behind a foot that moved through uh, last night and early this morning, 30.05 and a steady barometer. Our Portage Health Houghton Hancock weather cam, well, it shows uh, at least, I think, some hints of clearing. So at this time of the uh, year, we're starting to uh, lose daylight pretty quickly. It does look like that clearing trend will move to the east. We'll talk about what to expect into the weekend in just a few minutes. Thanks a lot, Carl, and those clocks turn backwards this coming weekend. November is Diabetes Awareness Month and tonight Dr. Michael Grossman talks about the growing concern with disease and for some an easy way to beat it. That's next in your TV6 Medical Minute and later they create a lot of waste each day but they're tops in the recycling game. The story on Dickinson County Health Services following sports on your TV6 Early News. If diabetes was a destination on a map it's certainly one you'd want to avoid. Unfortunately, because of increasing amounts of physical inactivity, poor food choices, and obesity, 
many Americans are already on that road. Currently, 26 million Americans have diabetes, and by 2050, it's estimated that one in three adults will have diabetes. Currently, 79 million Americans have a condition called prediabetes. Prediabetes occurs if the fasting blood sugar is greater than 100, but less than 125. Many people with prediabetes will go on to get diabetes. Luckily, diabetes can, in certain cases can be avoided or prevented. Exercise a half an hour a day, weight training two days a week, and a healthy diet, as well as weight loss if you're overweight or obese. November is National Diabetes Awareness Month. For TV6's Medical Minute, this is Dr. Michael Grossman. And you can see your TV6 Medical Minute each Wednesday right here on your TV6 Early News. Today, Marquette residents could get a free checkup by stopping by the YMCA. NMU family nurse practitioner graduate students held a health fair to raise awareness about their profession and provide health services to community members. Graduate students took vital signs like weight and height measurements and offered brief physical exams to participants. Several other organizations were on hand as well to provide information such as dental care and assistance programs. Organizers say the YMCA was the perfect place to hold this health fair. One of our focuses is health promotion and they have what better place for health promotion than here where they can exercise and get that kind of stuff going too. So it was a great, great place for us to do it. In addition to physicals, the nurses also provided information on any existing conditions those that were there may have and how to access any resources they may need. Well, is the sun making a big return for the end of the week, and what can we expect to see on the old thermometer? Well, TV6 meteorologist Carl Bonek will have your detailed forecast next. A good day on Wall Street today with stocks closing higher. The Dow up 178, the Nasdaq gaining 33. The increase is coming as international leaders scramble to save a weak old plan to prevent a financial crisis in Europe. Gold prices with an $18 gain ending at $1,729 an ounce. And crude oil prices rising 32 cents, closing at net two fifty one a barrel. There's a look at today's most active issues and stocks of local interest. Temperatures across the UP, actually not much of a range in the 40s all over, 42 at Iron Mountain in Florence, the cool spot, it's 45 on Tanagan as well as Copper Harbor, 47 at Munising, the warm spot, 43 at Manistee. Downstate still in the 60s, Lansing and Detroit, 47 at the Sioux, mid to upper 40s on the west end of Lake Superior. Satellite loop over the last 12 hours shows our flow coming out of the southwest, and that's why that front is in moving very quickly, the frontal zone. It's now cleared the upper peninsula, but it's slowly moving to the southeast, and we know it is because there's waves of low pressure along it. That's a symptom that it's taking its sweet time. And to the north of the front, lots of clouds clouds and uh, even rain. Temperatures upstream from where our air is coming from actually near to above average for this time of the year into south central Canada and the northern plains basically in the 40s and uh, the rain well it's moving from southwest to northeast. It looks like the far eastern UP will be in the rain for several hours tonight before clearing finally makes its way in. And out to the west another big storm moving into western Canada. That's a warm signal for us. Here's what we expect on Thursday, that low moving up into the Northwest Territories with a trailing front. For us, the front gets far enough away so that high pressure builds in. We should see plenty of sunshine. More sun on Friday as a big upper level ridge aloft begins to develop with mild air. We'll start a warm up and then on Saturday, south winds increase. It looks even warmer with sunshine, maybe a few clouds developing. Back with more in a moment. Temperatures will start out some spots in the western interior in the 20s to the 30s across the rest of the UP early tomorrow. And then afternoon, it looks relatively mild for this time of the year, 40s to near 50. Your forecast tonight, skies will gradually clear out west and uh, 
Well, out east, some rain, but some clearing later on. Lows from the upper 20s, the western interior, 30s elsewhere. Then for tomorrow, northwest to west winds. This high is of Pacific origin, so it looks relatively mild, 40s to near 50. And even though we'll have a wind off the lake, we're not expecting lake effect and probably not even any clouds. It looks like mostly sunny weather. Your TV six day forecast. Look for high temperatures to gradually warm to the uh, 50 degree range into the 50s over the weekend. The next storm will pass well to the west. Maybe some scattered showers Saturday night into Sunday. Well, what an exceptional three day stretch there. It looks nice for this time of the year. Yeah. We've been cloudy a lot lately, and that's what happens at this time of the year. So you see, no the, shine, no shade. Remember that? <laughs> November. Yes, November. <laughs> no kidding. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Carl. Your sports is just around the corner and tonight the NMU hockey team getting ready for another top 10 opponent this time the fighting Irish of Notre Dame and your winner of the play of the week TV 6's Mudlam has it all next in sports when your TV 6 early news returns. Good evening, everyone. The enemy Wildcats have fallen back to seventh place in the Central Collegiate Hockey Association after getting swept at Western Michigan. But there's no time to dwell on the past. Sixth-ranked Notre Dame visits the Barry Event Center this weekend. The Wildcats have four points in the league, five points behind the fourth-place party Irish. Notre Dame swept Bowling Green last weekend. The enemy is learning from its lessons taught by the Broncos in Kalamazoo. We weren't very good dealing with a real aggressive forecheck. I think. Uh, um, Western Michigan came at us hard and at times hemmed us in our end and we didn't move the puck up the ice efficiently. That's number one. Number two, we didn't do a very good job getting shots through and on net when we had shooting opportunities. We allowed Western to block a ton of shots and a ton of opportunities and I think those are things right now that we're going to spend a lot of time working on. Uh, we got to have a better first period. Uh, I think both games, Friday and Saturday, we uh, had a sluggish start and uh, that's something uh, that has to change this weekend. we got to come out and uh, play well in the first period. We learned that we really need to improve our puck speed, especially in the offensive zone. We need to work a lot in our defensive zone as well on man coverage. And uh, I think once we start uh, shoring those two things up, we'll uh, make big improvements out there. Face off both nights at 735. Saturday's contest will be the second annual Pink Experience Game, supporting the fight against breast cancer. Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Conference uh, came out with its preseason basketball polls today. On the women's side, Michigan Tech ranked third in the country in the USA Today ESPN poll is ranked to finish first in the GLIAC North Division, followed by Grand Valley State, Lake Superior State, Northwood is fourth, and NMU is sixth. On the men's side, Michigan Tech gets points ahead of Grand Valley State in the North Division. Ferris State is third, followed by Lake Superior State and NMU bringing up the backside in sixth seventh place. Escanado's Austin Young bobbled the snap, recovered it, and then ran 64 yards for a touchdown in a pre-district playoff game against Ludington in the Eskimos' 35-21 win. This play received 46% of the 300 votes cast. In a battle for the football hearts and minds of Ishpeming, the Hematites' Tyrus Milimaki returned this punt, 60 yards for a touchdown as the Hematites beat their counterparts from Westwood 36-6. This play collected 40% of the vote. A pass from Iron Mountain Alex Herman to Paul Brooks was third. If you have video or something special that could be an idea for the play of the week as in a nominee, you can send it to us in a number of ways, including our website at UpperMichiganSource.com. And don't forget, you can use our website or our Facebook page to register for a drawing coming up November 11th for four tickets to the Packers-Lions game, or should I say the Lions at Packers game, on New Year's Day. So. I know, I know you're filling that out as fast as possible. Yeah, and that's like a 1 o'clock in the afternoon game, as I well, understand. Re remember, that could get shifted, though. It could, yeah. The flex schedule could right. move it around. But, uh, and it should be a great game. So I would think so. I think it would be fantastic to see. Yes. I think I have to quit to win, though, I think. As usual. Right. We'll have to see what happens. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Mike. Coming up, the UP Recycler of the Year. That story next on your TV6 Early News. Finally tonight, Dickinson County Health Services has been awarded the Upper Peninsula Recycler of the Year. For a company that shreds over 20 tons of documents each year, this is a big deal. They also work with a huge amount of cardboard, which is put through the process. As a medical facility, they create a fair amount of chemicals, but they're also recycled. They even make sure linens are reused, donating them to local churches and sewing programs to be used in quilts. 
it just goes to show you that uh, the uh, employees here have really pitched in and made an effort to uh, to recycle, especially at a time when recycling is not a not a big thing. DCHS is also a mercury fee free facility and take green building construction into consideration for all their new additions. And uh, congratulations to them. A last look at the weather, a warm up coming. It looks like, um, yeah, and in fact, this overall pattern right on maybe up to about deer season looks on the mild side. That wouldn't be good for the hunters. They want track and snow on that day. We'll see. Uh, you know, we could have some snow, but overall it looks like above average temperature. Thanks, Carl. Good night, everybody.